so now it's time to start using our model or the process of inference. So we're going to walk through how that model is deployed onto an infrastructure and what that means for the communications patterns underneath and how that's different from the training phase. So we decide to use our agent and so we prompt our agent. We ask it a question or ask for uh, make a statement and have it respond to it. The agent itself is a CPU driven process. So the, the web page, the, the form, whatever it is that you're interacting with is on some traditional uh, cloud infrastructure, CPU driven, and is connected to our front end network, right? And there could be, of course, this could be a, a, a huge number of computers that service many thousands or hundreds of thousands of people at one time. But the agent itself then packages that query and understands how to activate the architecture and parameters inside the model. So our model has been loaded into our nodes in all of the GPUs, however many they are, inside of our nodes. <clears throat> For large models, it's likely that it will not fit within the memory of a single GPU. So the, the new wave of GPUs that are coming to market have about 190 gigabit, gigabytes of, of memory per GPU. Many of the largest models are much, much bigger than that. And so we'll take that model and we'll start to chop it up in the same way we did with inference. We'll start to segment that and place it on different parts of the CPU infrastructure and different CPU memory. So we have our model loaded so that we can do inference here in the GPUs. The query will come in. It'll go through the front end network and it'll engage the CPU that's in each one of these nodes. And the CPU will then deploy that and again, activate the architecture and parameters inside of the model. So the very first thing instead is called prefill. Prefill sometimes is a CPU driven task, uh, most likely a CPU driven task. And that's kind of the entry point into the model. The, 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 the idea is we want to get the model started and activate that neural network, the weights in the model and how they relate to one another. We want to get it started in the right way. Again, using that Azure example, we want to understand that we're talking about blue and not the Microsoft product. So once that's done, we've, we've done the, uh, the prefill, we start to activate the neural network inside of the GPUs. So the GPUs go to town, they start to process that data, understand how things are related, but most likely they don't have the whole picture. They don't understand what the next portion of the response will be. So they may have to pass that traffic, the, the response so far, over to another GPU. Well, in the simplest case, they're gonna use that scale-up network, the NVLink or Infinity Fabric network that's inside of a GPU. Maybe maybe the next part of the model that they need is co-located inside the node. Very easy example, no networking technology needed there at all, just the scale-up network. But more likely, they're gonna to have to communicate with other portions of the model all over these deployed GPUs. And so in that case, they are going to transit the backend network. So they're gonna pass that information, again, using RDMA, to another model, some, another portion of the model somewhere, which will continue that work, and then that may, that may be passed to another portion of the model, and then maybe inside, and then over here, and they're gonna keep going back and forth, effectively bouncing around while they're generating the response as it comes out. And that response, is, if you've seen it, if you used AI, you know it comes in sort of a, a linear fashion as it progresses, and as it goes out, those are tokens that are coming back. We talked about tokenization before, chopping up pieces into words, portions of words, or um, you know, units of data. It's the same as we get a response out of the model. We're getting tokens out of the model. And in fact, the speed of those tokens is one of the measurements that we use on how well our infrastructure is performing. So as it starts to effectively start generating these tokens and ultimately produce our response, it's at a high degree of communication. Now, what's different about this communication versus uh, training a model is the fact that these are very, very small pieces of information that are traded back and forth. They're not the giant elephant flows uh, that, that we saw in the training portion. These are very small chunks of data that are, that are being passed around. So rather than bandwidth being the critical concern for inference, it's actually latency. We want to have the lowest latency, the lowest uh, measurable delay between any two portions of this network. So here's another big concern that we have. If we want to build a, a network that can be used for both training and inference, then we need to be focused on both uh, bandwidth performance as well as latency performance. So two different, two different things to, uh, to know as you're starting to design your network for artificial intelligence applications. So this starts to bounce around and ultimately we come to the end of our answer. The answer is complete. All of this is being fed through the agent back to the user and then our query is done and we're waiting for the next query. Again, for people like OpenAI that run a single model, GPT, 
that's uh, across their entire infrastructure, they have that model loaded everywhere and every prompt, every query that comes through uses that same model. But there are a large number of growing GPU as a service providers. You can go to one of the hyperscalers, you can go to some, uh, to some new companies that are essentially renting GPU infrastructure for both training and inference. And in that case, the memory that's here in these GPUs and the cores in the GPUs are being used for many different models at the same time. So you'll load in, you could potentially inside memory have many different models. Again, we talked about that um, mixture of agents where agents are small and they perform very specific high quality tasks. Those could all be loaded into the same bank of memory in one or more GPUs. And so we, we ask our question, the agent is specific for that model, it knows how to activate that model which lives ships in the night with another model that's on the same infrastructure. Uh, this, this kind of multi-tenancy is going to be really, really important as we start to lower the unit cost of delivering AI models and scaling this infrastructure. So how do we measure that? Well, I mentioned it before. We talk about tokens that are produced, right? And tokens can be from a single model, they can be from every model in the system, doesn't matter what it is. Token generation is kind of the base unit, the base quantum that we have to measure what we're doing. So tokens per second is a great way to take a look at how performant our infrastructure is and what our cost ultimately is. If you're an enterprise, you're concerned about cost, of course, and so you want to know what the tokens per second is. And of course, that's related to how much money you're spending on the infrastructure. So tokens per second for a given amount of money is a metric that the industry uses to determine how performant a particular architecture, how performant a particular GPU or node, integrated node uh, that they are. If you remember before, I mentioned that there are other vendors, uh, in addition to the NVIDIAs and the AMDs, the Intels of the world, that are producing inference-only chips. So I mentioned one called Grok, and Grok produces an inference chip, which is um, a, quite an engineering feat, has a massive amount of memory, it has all sorts of cores which we're able to process on that memory, and Grok right now is, um, is generating tokens at something like 10 times as fast as the next GPU. Now the trade-off is Grok is only used for inference. It's not very good at all for training. The other GPU might be very good for both use cases. So that's something that, a, that an organization is gonna have to determine whether they need an infrastructure for both or whether they just need an infrastructure for one of the two use cases. Uh, there are others like Cerebris and there are other startups that are coming into the marketplace that are uh, specifically focusing on either training or inference chips. And again, the idea here is that these could be deployed in this very same area of the network and use the le you know, leverage the same back-end infrastructure and front-end infrastructure. In fact, we probably will see before too long a mixture of different types of chips where you have some NVIDIA chips here which are used for training and you have some AMD chips which are the next generation used for training and then you have some, some Grok systems which are used for inference. So this many-to-many -many type of um, uh, structure is also one of the design elements that we need to incorporate when we're looking at how to build these networks.